some attention to issues related to the economy because as i said during my budget speech our emphasis is to ensure that economic growth which is the prime instrument to bring sabka saath sabka vikas will be the focus of this government as much as national security i wish to name and thank each one of the members who have spoken dr sashi tarur shri jain sena shri p r balu shri kalyan banerjee shri vinayak rao shri santosh kumar ji shri batruhari mehtab shri sukhbir singh badal shri raguram ramakrishna raju kumar danish ali श्री सुनील दत्तात्रे दत्तकरे श्री जगदंबिका पाल श्री प्रद्युत बोर्डोलॉय श्री बैद्यनाथ प्रसाद महतो श्री श्रीमती अपराजिता सारंगी श्री तोकीहितो यप्तोमी श्री जुगल किशोर श्री रमेश विदुरी श्री हरिचंद्र हरीश द्विवेदी जी श्री रंग अप्पा चंदु बरने श्री रक्षा निखिल खड़से श्री भगवंत मान श्री वीरेंद्र सिंह जी श्री नामा नागेश्वर राव श्री विनोद कुमार सोनकर श्री रामचंद्र पासवान श्री गणेश मूर्ति श्री वसंत कुमार श्री एस आर पार्थिबन श्री डॉक्टर किरीति सोलंकी श्री श्रीमती प्रतिमा मंडल श्री नंद कुमार सिंह चौहान श्रीमती रंजन बैठ रंजना रंजन भट्ट श्री मितेश रमेश भाई पटेल श्रीमती प्रणीत कौर श्री अजय मिश्रा थेनी श्रीमती सुनीता दुग्गल श्री एज राजा श्रीमती रेखा वर्मा श्री के सुब्बरायन श्री शिशिर अधिकारी श्री नलिन कुमार काटिल कर्नल राज्यवर्धन राठौर श्री एंटो एंटनी श्री मार्गनी भारत श्री पी पी चौधरी श्रीमती सुप्रिया सुले श्री के राम मोहन नायडू श्री कपिल मोरेश्वर पाटिल श्री फिरोज वरुण गांधी श्री दिलेश्वर कामत श्री बी बी पाटिल श्रीमती रमा देवी श्री सुधाकर तुकाराम श्रंगरे श्री जनार्दन सिंह श्री ग्रीवाल डॉक्टर के जय कुमार श्री श्रीकांत एकनाथ शिंदे श्री राजेंद्र घाविट श्री राजन विचारे श्री ज्ञान 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 धीरभ्यम ज्ञान धीरभ्यम सॉरी बोत श्री भगवंत खूबा श्री गिरीश चंद्र श्री नवस खनी श्री अनुभव मोहंती श्री नारायण भाई कचाड़िया श्री एम अरिफ श्री सिद्धेश्वर श्री एन के प्रेमचंद्रन श्री आसादुद्दीन ओवैसी श्री तीरथ सिंह रावत श्री सप्तगिरि उलाका श्री थॉमस थरीखाडन श्री अपरूपा पुद्दार श्री गजानन कीर्तिकर श्री सुनील कुमार पिंटू श्री आसित कुमार मल डॉक्टर सुभाष सरकार श्रीमती अनुप्रिया पटेल श्रीमती रीटा बहुगुणा जोशी श्री एम सेल्वराज श्री हनुमान बेनीवाल श्री विजय बाघेल श्री तालरी रंगैया श्री पंकज चौधरी श्रीमती मीनाक्षी लेखी श्री एम के राघवन श्रीमती सुमलता अंबरीश श्री डी रवि कुमार डॉक्टर वीरेंद्र कुमार श्री निहाल चंद श्री पुष्पेंद्र सिंह चंदेल श्री अजय भट्ट श्री पी रविंद्र कुमार एंड श्री रतन सिंह मगन सिंह राठौर श्री सौ प्रोफेसर सौगता राय श्रीमती लोकेट चटर्जी श्री बद्रुद्दीन अजमल मिस अगाता संगमा श्री प्रदीप कुमार श्री कोमटी रेड्डी वेंकट रेड्डी श्री संजय कुमार भांडी श्री कोंडेटी गोडेटी माधवी श्री खगेन मुर्मू श्री तिरमा बलवन श्री रवि किशन श्री प्रताप सिम्हा श्री संगीत श्रीमती संगीता आजाद श्री संगम लाल गुप्ता श्री तापिर गांव श्री ओम प्रकाश गोपाल सिंह राजे निम्बलकर श्री मुकेश राजपूत श्री धर्मेंद्र कश्यप श्री गौरव गोगोय श्री सुशील कुमार सिंह श्री रामचरण बोहरा सुभाष डॉक्टर सुभाष भामरे श्री प्रभात भाई सभा भाई पटेल श्री अजय टमटा श्री राजू बिस्ता एंड प्रोबेबली थ्री मोर हु स्पोकन दिस आफ नोन
and as of the last last four of them who have spoken just now and as of uh, last night there was a cumulative total of 15 hours and about 9 minutes spent on this in addition to that we we'll add what has been spent here now so i am extremely grateful that the members volunteered to speak came up with a lot of suggestions and questions and really very uh, it's inspirational that the budget has even so much of interest in the house so speaker i just want to bring in certain factual picture of how this budget has been presented to the house there was an interim budget which was presented in 2019-20 in the parliament on 1st february 2019 and the connected appropriation bill with the the vote of vote on account was all passed and it was effective till 31st july 2019 as a result this budget which is now being passed is essentially to keep the continuity post 31st july to maintain the government and its expenditure and also to provide for the fiscal year which is already commenced so with the constitution of the 17th lok sabha and the formation of a new government the regular budget as this is now called the regular budget for 2019 2020 has been proposed to the parliament in this session the regular budget as we call it 2019 20 i repeat that number 13 lakh 29428 crore this entails an increase of this is important this entails an increase of 82845 crores over the re of 200 2018 and 2 lakh 44298 crores more than the actual of 2017-18 so i would want to emphasize that two years after the gst implementation when even as we present this budget we are very clearly saying that under the central sponsored scheme the amount which is being spread is far higher than what it was earlier then the budget 2019-20 reflects the government's commitment and i'm happy to say that it reflects the commitments of this government to substantially boost investment in agriculture substantially boost investment in social sector particularly in education and in health keeping the fiscal deficit at 3.3% of gdp as against the 3.4 which was envisaged in the interim budget in the be 2019-20 government is committed to continue the path of fiscal consolidation let me reassure the house that we are committed to continue the path of fiscal consolidation without compromising on the requirements of public expenditure placed by the various sectors so there need not be any worries or anxiety that if we are really pass uh, insisting on keeping the fins- uh, fiscal consolidation map will the social sectors will help will education suffer no not at all we are ensuring that they are taken care of and this has been achieved through prudent rationalization of expenditure and mobilization of additional resources in the budget estimates of 2019-20 those who are interested in the numbers i would like to repeat here the total expenditure is placed at 27 lakh 86,300 showing an increase of 3 lakh 44,136 crores. The total expenditure of the government has increased by 3 lakh 44,136 crores over the BE of 2018-19, and an increase again of 3 lakh 29,000. 114 crores 
over the RE 2018-19. So with figures, I wish, wish to say here... माननीय वित्त मंत्री जी आप उनको अलाव मत कीजिए आप बोलिए आप कंट्रीज कीजिए आप कंट्रीज कीजिए मैं आपको बाद में मौका दूंगा Sir, any concerns on the figures, figures which have been released till now, figures which have been picked up from other sources like economic survey, which the chief economic advisor has brought out, I have a separate section to address during my speech today. So I hope that will address the concern. If I only can read your mind, member, I will. So good. The money. Speaker sir, Speaker sir, Professor Saugata Roy is very senior and has a lot of concern. Noticed my absence about not being in the house yesterday and I shall respond to him and to the concerns that he has raised with just one comment to make. That, that data did not make a part of my speech. Was something which I myself stood up to say as soon as I finished the budget speech with your permission. And I wish Professor Saugata Roy heard me say that then that it was part of the annexure yeah. to my speech and part of an entire budget document. Yeah. If Professor, if only Professor, yeah. respected speaker, yeah. if only Professor and a senior member of this house heard me as much as he noticed that I was not in the house, heard me as much as I spoke that day and went into over the weekend into the budget document, he wouldn't have this question today. But never mind. So I continue with your permission. I continue with your permission to speak about my reply to the members. So the budget estimate clearly, which I have read out now, shows increase in government expenditure. And the total expenditure includes a provision of 12 lakh and 2,404 crores under the various schemes. So the figures for expenditure, particularly on sectors which will be of keen interest for most of us, I have explained here. There is of course a lot of uh, questions about tax receipts. I'll take one minute of your precious time, Speaker. The gross tax receipts, and this is not something which I am saying today, they are all in the documents. The gross tax receipts are budgeted at 24,61,195 crores in the B 2019-20, which marks an increase. Members, please note, tax receipts I have mentioned what I have said in the BE 2019-20 and that marks an increase of 2,13,020 crores, 9.48% increase in tax receipts over 2018-19 BE. Ari, census net tax revenue after transfer of state share and transfer to National Disaster Response Fund is estimated to be 16,49,582 crores with an increase of 1,65,176 crores. Again an increase of 11.13% over the RE of 2018-19. So nowhere, I reassure you speaker sir, nowhere is a decline, expenditure is in improved and increased, income receipts have also increased, so I like to assure this house that the figures which I am reading now here are there for you to refer and if necessary come back to me on again. The non-tax revenue receipts are estimated 
at 3,13,179 crores in the B of 2019-20 and the revenues expected from this investment which will be of interest to many of our members the revenues expected from this investment are budgeted at a realistic 1 lakh 5000 crores in BE 2019-20 now let me assure you again the projections made in the budget are realistic and adequately provide for items of expenditure such as defense expenditure pensions and salaries, internal security and other welfare programs and establishment expenditure of the government itself. So to fully finance these expenditure commitments, necessary resource mobilization from tax and non-tax non sources have also been envisaged. So as I said, members have taken a lot of interest. A lot of inputs have come from members who have raised various different questions too. But here I wish to aggregate the various comments made by different members. Some of them will relate to one or two members. Some of them will relate as my response. Some of them will relate to many members. So I have tried only to collate all of them by topic and the responses more for each one of those honourable members who have raised the questions. So instead of going through response by each member, I am going with a collective collated version so that all of our times can be more optimally utilised. <laughs> Speaker Sir, I recollect that when I was presenting the budget, I very clearly said that this budget certainly comes at a time when an interim budget had already been presented. I am also conscious that this is the last year of the 14th Finance Commission and this year, probably sometime in November, October, November, the new commission, the 15th Finance Commission's report will be received, it will be submitted to the Rashtrapati and then of course the government will get to seeing it. And therefore the, bu the budget which comes in February of 2020 will take on board the recommendations as it is then decided, as it would be then decided of the new Finance Commission. But then this budget definitely, as I kept saying to some of my colleagues, has two bookends. One is the pro interim budget which was submitted in uh, February before the elections and the fact that the Reserve Finance Commission and between the two bookends, we are making provisions and therefore this budget gives a big picture of this newly elected government which has a strong mandate from the people of India. And as a result, the big picture tells you what we want to do in the 10 years, which was broadly mentioned even during the interim budget. And even as it does roll out the 10-year vision, we've kept ourselves a mid decadal target which is the 5 trillion economy, 5 trillion US dollar economy target and towards it we spoke of effectively bringing a good cycle towards investment, towards generating more jobs, towards greater manufacturing within India and making India a manufacturing hub. And how would we do it? We would do it by bringing in more steps towards having greater investment drawn into this country. And for that promotion of growth, among many other things, the few things which I want to draw the attention of the House, which is also part of what some of the members have raised, foreign direct investment policy sees further liberalization. There is a turnover limit uh, hike as regards lowering of the corporate tax from 25, 30% to 25%. So today only companies which have up to 400 crores get covered under the 25% taxation. Additional income tax deduction of 1.5 lakh on the interest paid on loans taken to purchase electric vehicles. And moving the GST council 
for the reduction of GST rates on electric vehicles from 12% to 5%. Along with all this, government has also increased the scope of voluntary pension scheme for retail traders and shopkeepers to everyone with an annual turnover of less than 1.5 crores. I also want to draw the attention of the House that government has made it very clear that its intention to push the infrastructure development of the country with an intention to invest 100 lakh crores in infrastructure over the next five years. These are some of the steps through which we want to improve. These are the steps through which we want to improve investment in the country. There is also the scheme for funding, upgradation and re regeneration of traditional industries, which has been started to facilitate cluster-based development to make traditional industries more productive, profitable and capable for generating sustained employment opportunities. And then again, we are making sure that there are reductions of custom duty on certain raw materials and capital goods, all of which are necessary for better promotion of domestic manufacturing. And then, you are aware, keeping women in mind, we have extended the scheme for at least one lakh of rupees to be provided to a member of every SHG group. So with all this, promotion of economic growth will be top of our agenda. But at the same time, taking care of the Kisan of the country, we have ensured that cash transfers under the PM Kisan, providing for an income of 6,000 rupees annually to all farmers, which was earlier limited only to farmers, who were holding less than two hectares of land. Now it's available for all farmers throughout the country. Further, to give focused attention to issues of growth, the government has constituted a five-member cabinet committee on investment and growth chaired by the Honorable Prime Minister himself. So if we have set the target of five trillion US dollars, it is because we are also taking very strong steps for promotion of growth. And for promotion of growth, incentivizing investment, ensuring that investment comes to this country and it makes a collective sense for us to draw the attention of all the investment uh, which can come, saying that this country has the correct ecosystem for it. And that is why policy changes are always prominently placed before the people. I come to the data, data which is of great interest for many of our members and who actually have started slightly because they want clarity to question as to why there are so many different figures floating around. I'd like to say specifically on the GDP growth rate related questions which all members probably were meaning to ask me. The growth rate of the nominal GDP for 2019-2020 in the budget documents. I'm sure members are really all ears to hear me on this. I seek their complete attention so that all doubts are dispelled. The growth rate of nominal GDP for 2019-20 in the budget documents has been projected at 12% over the advanced nominal GDP estimates of 188,40,731 crores for 2018-19. The advance estimates of 2018-19 were released. The dates are important. The advance estimates for 2018-19 were released on 7th January 2019. The next which is equally important so that all the gaps can be filled up. The growth rate of nominal GDP for 2019-20 in the economic survey, please note the first one which I said was for the budget documents. This is about the economic survey. The growth rate 
of the nominal GDP for 2019-20 in the economic survey has been projected at 11% over the uh, provisional nominal GDP estimates of 190 lakhs 10,164 crores of 2018-19. The provisional estimates for 2018-19 were released on 31st May. The first one was 7 January 2019. This one was released on 31st May 2019. Both the projections, I underline, both the projections are consistent with each other as each of them project the nominal GDP of 211,607,000 crores for the year 2019-20. This is because as compared to the economic survey, the higher GDP growth rate of 12% projected in the budget documents of 2019-20 is on a lower base, lower GDP base for 2018-19. So, why did the budget use it? Naturally, that will be the question next. Why did the budget use it? Something which is different from the economic survey. The economic survey is produced by the CEA and the government of India holds a respectful arms distance with the economic survey. Please do recollect that. And why did the document, budget documents use this figure? A lower GDP base of 2018-19 has been used in the budget documents as the same GDP base was used in the interim budget of 2019-20 projected and presented in January 2019. Remember the figures which was used then in the budget documents were released even on 7th January, so latest. Using the same GDP base ensures comparability budget to budget, interim and the regular. Regular with the last year regular is possible, only use comparable base. So, using the same GDP base ensures comparability of deficit ratios projected for 2019-20 in both the interim and in this July budget and as much as what, what was relevant data in the last year's budget. So, I hope scholars respected honourable members of this house who thought too many figures were floating around would now be clear that they have reasons for being there and it is therefore the consistency with which government's budget documents is produced whether it's interim or the regular as different from what is used in the economic survey. Alright? So I hope members can now look at a fresh Alright? So you can please look at what has been given to you officially. After this, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Speaker, please. Please. Please, Mani Suresh. Speaker sir, Speaker sir, I would like to request them. We have heard them very patiently. And honorable <laughs> ministry is replying that they should hear and after that... Oh, 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 what you are doing is your right. Disturbing is your right. No, no, it is unfair, I am telling you. Please, Suresh. Economic survey data of 1819 and now the government is continuous, please. Maanne Sadash, 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 please. Maanne even if I mocked at sometimes, even if I mocked at sometimes, I spoke like a teacher to a class of students. Pardon me. And even if that's not sufficient, I'm quite happy to receive members to room number 36 with your respect. Sir, quite a few 
member. Quite a few members. Quite a few members have said that central government provides funds to national disaster response fund. It is a self-based fund. is constituted under Section 36 of the Disaster Management Act of 2006. The eventual management, eventual implementation of the GFC, Mani 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 please, please Mani Mani please, Mani Mani please. Please, please, please sit down, please. Mane Sadesh, Mane Sadesh, please sit down, please. Eight minutes, sit down. Please sit down, please. Please, please sit down, please sit down. May I see Mane Sadesh? Mane Sadesh, I'm going to get out of Mane Sadesh, please. Mane Sadesh, I'm going to get out of here. Please, please, please. Mane Sadesh, please. Sit down, please. Dada, sit down. Mane Sadesh, please. Please. I'm going to get out of here. Please, Mane Sadesh. Please. Mane Sadesh. Please. Mane Sadesh, please. Please. Please, Mane Sadesh. Please. Please. Please, Mane Sadesh. आप माने से प्लीज बैठिए प्लीज माने से ऐसी कोई भी बात जब कार्रवाई में मेरे आएगी तो मैं निश्चित रूप से देख लूंगा प्लीज माने सर मैं हम सब माननीय वित्त मंत्री जी की बातें बड़ी ध्यान से सुन रहे हैं लेकिन ध्यान से सुनने का मतलब यह नहीं कि हम एक गुमराह करें और हम गुमराह होते रहे ये तो नहीं है अगर किसी कहीं हमें लगे कि आपका भाषण में कोई प्लीज करने की कोशिश हो रही है तो हम तो कैरिफिकेशन मांगेंगे अगर कैरिफिकेशन मांगने का मतलब ये नहीं आप हमें कहेंगे कि हम पूरे हैं आप किसे हैं मान मान्य सदस्य मान्य सदस्य प्लीज प्लीज मान्य सदस्य मान्य सदस्य फाइन मान्य सदस्य प्लीज माने सर प्लीज मंत्री आप माने सदस्य प्लीज माने सदस्य माने सदस्य आप पहली बार आए प्लीज बैठे दादा प्लीज माने दादा मैं आपको मैं क्लियर पिशन करने दूंगा मामा बाद में मैं मौका दूंगा पॉइंट ऑफ ऑर्डर नहीं आपको क्लियर पिशन करने दूंगा माने सदस्य प्लीज माने मंत्री जी मान्य मंत्री जी मान्य मान्य मंत्री जी मान्य वित्त मंत्री जी मान्य मान्य सदस्य बोल मान्य सदस्य बता देना आप प्लीज सिट डाउन प्लीज डाउन प्लीज मान्य आप मान्य वित्त मंत्री जी कंटिन्यू मान्य सदस्य मैं आपका सबका के लिए फीजन कराऊंगा प्लीज बैठ जाए No point of order. No point of order. No allow point of order. Mani Vittu Mantri Ji. I wish to Mani Vittu Mantri Ji Red Day आसन पैरों पे बैठ जाइए प्लीज आसन पैरों बैठ जाइए प्लीज बैठ जाइए आसन पैरों पे प्लेट मान्य सदस्य मान्य सदस्यगण सभी मान्य से मान्य मान्य से प्लीज प्लीज हाँ हाँ मैं 
आसन पे रो प्लीज बैठ जाइए आसन पे रो पे आसन पे रो प्लीज बैठ जाइए प्लीज बैठ जाइए प्लीज आप गौरव जी सबको प्लीज सबको प्लीज दादा प्लीज प्लीज आसन पे रो पे आप वरिष्ठ सदस्य प्लीज बैठ जाइए एक बार बैठ जाइए मान्य सदस्यगण मान्य सदस्य प्लीज 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 आसन पे रोपे मान्य सदस्यगण मैंने आपको पूर्ण व्यवस्था दे दी थी मैं सभी कार्रवाई को देखने के बाद सदन में जो उचित होगा उससे आपसे चर्चा करके उस कार्रवाई से उसको हटाया जाएगा माननीय वित्त मंत्री जी हाँ हाँ बोल दी व्यवस्था दे दी ना दादा हाँ बोल दी ना वित्त मंत्री जी थैंक यू सर आई टॉक अबाउट सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट फंड फिर बैठे बैठे गवर्नमेंट प्लीज माने सदस्य माने सदस्य माने सदस्य प्लीज माने सदस्य प्लीज प्लीज मैंने व्यवस्था दे दी सब बैठ जाए माने सदस्य प्लीज प्लीज दादा प्लीज बैठ माने सदस्य प्लीज बैठ जाए आप बैठ जाए आप माने वित्त मंत्री जी बैठे बैठे मत बोलिए माने सदस्य बैठे बैठे मत बोलिए provides funds through the national disaster response fund which is a cess based fund meant for providing relief of immediate nature in case of natural calamities which is given to the state ndrs is constituted under section 46 of the disaster management act 2005 National calamity contingency duty is levied to finance the NDRF and the additional budgetary support which is provided as and when necessary a provision also exists to encourage any person or institution to make a contribution to the NDRF eventual to implementation of the GST collection on account of the nccd which is the national calamity contingency duty is on the lower side and therefore gross budgetary support is being provided to supplement the requirement in this respect in addition funds are also allocated under the state disaster response fund which is the sdrs as finance commission grants the amount of annual contribution to the sdrf of each state for each financial year would be as recommended by the finance commission for its award period the share of the central government in the sdrf shall be remitted to the state governments in two installments in june and december in each financial year normally they arises a lot of discussion because when the amounts are due between june and december there's this feeling that center has not released the funds but these are the two mile posts for releasing of such funds the state government shall also transfer their contribution to the sdrf in two installments in june and december of the same year provided that if the ministry of home affairs upon being satisfied that exigencies of a particular calamity so warrant may recommend an earlier release of the central share up to 25% of the fund due to the states in the following year so i just want to highlight that the ndrf to meet the requirement of any natural calamities for the year 2019-20 that is the be is 10000 crores for the ndrf and 10343.85 for the sdrf even that has been very clearly and the data for the amount distribution by state is also available so i like to have a quick reference to what has been festering us 
in the name of NPA, non-performing assets, because that is. The banking system in the country has been operating against very severe challenging backdrop <laughs> and that backdrop is also aggravated by the difficult global economic conditions and that's lasted for a long period. So it has generally adversely affected the banks recognized by the RBI's committee. Uh, there's, there's been a spurt of stress assets in the recent times and they have said inter alia aggressive lending practices during the downturn, some willful defaults, some loan frauds, corruption in some cases and also the economic slowdown have all contributed to it. Systemic factors also have added to it such as a culture of general in among some people lacks credit uh, discipline and then lack of domain expertise for loans to specialized nature, large exposure of, to some consortiums which have really uh, had poor governance, non-adherence to loan covenants and so on. So this government came up with a four R strategy consisting of recognition of NPAs transparently leading to resolution, the first R, recovery of value from stressed assets, the second R, re recapitalizing the public sector banks, the third R, and the fourth, the reforms of in public sector banks and financial ecosystem, thereby trying to reduce the NPAs in total. We also want to very clearly identify and mark what we've done in terms of bringing change in the credit culture through the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code, which fundamentally changed the credit borrower, uh, borrower relationship, taking away the control of defaulting companies for promoters or owners and debarring willful defaulters. The second is the securitization and reconstruction of financial assets and enforcement of Security Interest Act, which was also amended to make it more effective with provision for three months imprisonment in case of the borrower does not provide asset details and for the lender to get possession of the mortgage asset within 30 days. These have been absolutely milestone of a, a step taken towards addressing the issue of NPA and we strongly believe that we are not only acting from the point of view of drawing investments with newer activities but ensuring that the NPA issue is solved in a holistic fashion. Over the last... शोकत दादा ने व्यवस्था दी थी कि मैं सदन में कभी उठकर बीच में नहीं बोलूंगा आपने कहा था ना सबने कहा था तो मेरा आग्रह सदन आपका है वित्त मंत्री जी के बाद आपका क्लियर पिशन के लिए मैं आपको समय क्लियर पिशन के लिए समय दूंगा आपका पर बीच में नहीं दादा प्लीज 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 बीच में नहीं दादा मानिस आप आप माननीय सदस्य बैठे बैठे नहीं बोले माननीय सदस्य आप सबने कहा था आपका जब क्लियर पिशन की आवश्यकता होगी तो मैं आपका समय दूंगा हाँ वो अभी मंत्री नहीं बने माननीय सदस्य भी मंत्री नहीं बने भगवान ने आपको मंत्री बनाया है तो ओवर द लास्ट फाइव इयर्स over the last five financial years, public sector banks were recapitalized to the extent of 3,19,497 crores with infusion of 2,52,987 crores by the government and mobilization of over 
66,510 crores by the PSB themselves. So we have ensured that we address the NPA issues so that the banking sector will not have to struggle to fund and to address newer credit requirements. So one of the major concerns, and I've heard some of the members say, not even one paragraph on agriculture has been read. No mention of agriculture has been made. I was surprised to hear this. Because, if anything, if I've elaborated much during my budget speech, it was for the agriculture sector, it was for farmers' welfare, it was for modernizing agriculture, it was making sure that agriculture in India gets a prominence. Now, in response to the questions which have been asked, of my, some, asked by some of the members, I'd like to just sort of put that record straight. Of course, every ministry comes up with an annual report from their ministry side to explain what exactly they have done over the year or several years. In the budget, of course, we come up with some mentions of each of the uh, ministries. Therefore, on the agricultural subject of agriculture, understanding that there is definitely a lot of challenges in the agrarian sector, not forgetting that legacy of the past are not something that has arisen during the period of 2014-19 alone. We are looking at a comprehensive solution for agriculture related matters. It's our government that has very early, even after taking over the responsibility in 2014, realized that the ag agriculture need, sector needs huge transformational steps. It is in this context that the Prime Minister had committed to doubling of farmers' income by 2022 and our government has developed a strategy for doubling farmers' income based on the recommendations of the Committee on Doubling Farmers' Income. So it's not as if we've just come up with a couple of schemes. It, this, this is clearly based on the recommendations given by the Committee on Doubling of Farmers' Income. And thanks to our policy, let me put some data on record. The country now produces food grains totaling 289 million tons. Horticultural expo export is 385 MTs and 180 metric tons of milk is now being produced and you know often in this house during the question hour several members have asked the concerned ministers and they have said how India tops on the chart of production of vegetables, fruits, milk and so many other agricultural products. The Universal Soil Health Card Scheme enhanced intensified coverage under the micro-irrigation particularly when we have a water problem all over the country micro-irrigation is the way to go neem coated urea have been promoted and providing easy access to all the farmers for fertilizers has reduced the cost of cultivation again something which has been repeated all the while after 2014 we have never seen queues of farmers waiting for fertilizer there has been no latte charge when farmers were waiting to connect the fertilizer earlier the history was earlier the history was when farmers went for their fertilizer they were beaten they were crushed and therefore i like to say that our measures have made a difference to the farmers MSP, where under minimum 50% is added to the margin of profit on the cost of cultivation. This is something which will be of great interest to all the. It will be of great interest to all the members of uh, Parliament who are here today. We've often heard discussions on Swaminathan Committee. I'll come to that in a minute. With the adoption of this new MSP policy in 2018, all the commodities, 
I underline all the commodities for which MSP, MSP is notified have seen a big jump in the MSP. Every item. Earlier, we have heard only wheat and rice. There are 22 or 24 such items which are mentioned in the MSP list. We have never heard of any of them before 2014 being getting MSP. Whereas now, 2014 onwards, you have for every one of the 22 items listed, MSP being provided, MSP being given, and procurements happening on the ground. Market reforms, market reforms have been a policy on a stone. Market reforms have been a, the policy, our, our policies cornerstone. Some of the initiatives included building a national agricultural market through ENAM, a new market architecture consisting of grants, that is competitive wholesale markets and agri-exports. The total 2000, uh, in 2018 budget, we have provided for a non-budgetary corpus fund of 2,000 crores to supplement the budgetary allocations and accelerate the pace of coverage under the ENAM and the GRAM. Ministry of Commerce has also adopted an agri-export policy with targeting to double the agri-exports by 2022. So not just the farmer's income, but also agri-export shall double by 2022 because of our policy. So if all these are reforms for agriculture, we have not forgotten the welfare measures, the measures that we need to take for the sake of the farmers. We have rolled out the PM Kisan, under which 6,000 rupees annually is transferred to every farmer irrespective of the size of holding. This historic step, this historic step costing 87,000 crores in a year has been enabled by this government. Everybody who talks about farmers' welfare, please note, we have not just spoken about it, we have acted on it. And this is the kind of budget that is being given for farmers' welfare. We are now working on a pension scheme for all farmers called, uh, under the scheme called Pradhan Mantri Man Samman Yojana. And again, just to make sure that greater focus is given on risk management through crop insurance scheme, that's also being accelerated. I, I mentioned earlier, Speaker Sir, the National Farmers Commission, what is otherwise popularly known as Swaminathan Commission. It is our government that took it seriously and started implementing the recommendations since 2014. Of the 272 recommendations, some of the recommendations have been already implemented. The most important recommendation relates to giving the farmers 50% of the cost of production as profit margin. It is our government, again, it is our government that took the historic decision of providing a minimum of 50% as the margin of profit on the cost of production in the year 2018. So, that is very important to notice that in agriculture, sir, not just one mention of one paragraph, but several instances of where the government has reached out and will reach out further for the farmers. MSPs are notified annually for Karif and Rabi crops. Accordingly, MSPs have been notified regularly, including for Karif 2019, which is already done. So, I want also to draw your very attention very quickly on the zero-budget uh, zero uh, farming, on which a lot of work has started. Greater details will be shared with the uh, respect, respectful members of Parliament. So I shall get into the details of crop insurance, but keeping the time in mind, and because I have a few more other things on agriculture, I want to draw your attention saying 5.61 crore farmers have been covered under the insurance schemes between 2018 and 19 over an area of about 30% of the gross crop area. 
and we are taking steps to use facial technology smartphones rationalize the number of crop cutting experiments and ensure that it is conducted in the presence of all concerned stakeholders who are farmers insurance agencies the state government representatives and the local elected representatives all can be there when the stakeholders are invited to talk on these things we are also planning to make the whole thing voluntary so that farmers willing to pay the premium will alone be covered under the scheme so on farmers let me assure that the members concern is well addressed and the budget did speak quite a lot about it so on the expenditure again questions were raised mahatma gandhi national rural employment guarantee scheme doesn't receive money adequately pradhan mantri awas yojana doesn't receive money adequately i like to address this issue i like to address this issue uh, respected speaker i would want to say first of all both the mahatma gandhi rural employment guarantee scheme and the pmay are demand driven in 2018-19 the bni in the mahatma gandhi rural employment guarantee was at 55000 crores however depending on the demand for work as manrega is a demand driven scheme as i said that in a minute a minute ago the allocations were enhanced at the re level to 61000 and 84 crores 61084 crores so compared to the be of 2018-19 of 55000 crore there has been an increase of 5000 crores in manrega allocation additionality 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 will be examined at the re stage in the current year's budget in the in the current year sir honorable speaker sir honorable speaker sir if i am being rebutted even before hearing the whole thing if i am being rebutted even before i conclude my point i may have to add in here sir to say manrega implementation during upa which was criticized by the cag and the implementation now marks a very big difference and that should answer the honorable members the cag the cag pointed out to very big slippages wrong doings wrong records and that that was the cg report so on the manrega the difference now is we are implementing it better than what was done earlier so the additionality will be examined in the rec stage in the current in, in the current year budget the be 2019-20 allocation under the manrega in the be 2019-20 is 60000 crores while he while while which is which is kept at a level of the interim budget it is the same figure which was given during the interim budget presented during 2019 so this can be this can be augmented this can be augmented during the re stage now pm pm ay rural pm ay rural if only honorable members can hear what i would want to say professor saugata roy is very keen to know the figures and i'm giving him the answer i wish he hears me out pm ay that is a rural 
in the RE 2018-19 PMAY allocation was 19,900 crores. Additionally, extra budgetary resources. Additionally, extra budgetary support of 10,658 crores was also provided. The total support thus was to the tune of 30,568 crores in 2018-19. In DE 2019-20, the budgetary support has been pegged at 19,000 crores. PMAY beneficiaries are almost being fully covered. But if required, the fund can be augmented again during the RE levels or through the EBR. Decision on the EBR is yet to be taken. I'll very quickly refer to the PMAY urban. In the RE 2018-19, PMAY allocation for urban was 6,505 crores. Additionally, EBR support of 20,000 crores was also provided. I repeat, EBR support of 20,000 crore was already provided. The total support that was to the tune of 26,505 crore. Therefore, this implies an overall increase of about 340 crore.
प्रधान नेशनल रूरल ड्रिंकिंग वाटर मिशन अमाउंट ऑफ इंक्रीज नेशनल हेल्थ मिशन अमाउंट ऑफ इंक्रीज नेशनल प्रोग्राम फॉर मिड डे मील इन फूड हैज इंक्रीज अंबरला आई सी डी एस अमाउंट ऑफ इंक्रीज मिशन फॉर नेशनल लाइवलीहुड आजीविका अमाउंट ऑफ इंक्रीज जॉब्स एंड स्किल डेवलपमेंट अमाउंट ऑफ इंक्रीज क्रॉप इंश्योरेंस स्कीम अमाउंट ऑफ इंक्रीज डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ पल्स टू स्टेट यूनियन टेरिटरीज एंड वेलफेयर स्कीम अमाउंट ऑफ इंक्रीज सो आई वुड लाइक टू ड्रॉ योर अटेंशन स्पीकर सर दैट इन एवरी वन ऑफ द कॉमन मैन इंप्लीकेशन वाला स्कीम वी हैव इंक्रीज द अमाउंट द कॉमन मोबिलिटी कार्ड मॉडर्न टेनेंसी लॉ थ्री फ्लोर रिटेलर्स एंड स्मॉल शॉपकीपर्स आर ऑल गेटिंग बेटर बेनिफिट्स फ्रॉम अस एनुअल टर्न ओवर बींग लेस देन वन पॉइंट फ्लोर फाइव फ्लोर प्रधानमंत्री शरण योगी मॉन देन स्कीम इज गिवन टू देम वन पॉइंट नाइन फाइव फ्लोर हाउसेज The fourth ambition setting up of 100 new clusters, 100 new clusters during 2019-20, which should enable 50,000 artisans to join the economic value chain. The most important. We will work with the state. to ensure har jar jal pipe the drinking water scheme for all the people to all rural households by the year 2024 and that is under the jal jeevan mission sir it is important again to notice that 1592 critical and over exploited blocks spread across 256 districts identified for the jal shakti abhiyan will be taken up seriously by the government so sustainable waste management will also be taken up in the rural areas so for labor welfare you know that we've already decided that the labor codes will be brought in already the cabinet has approved that is one of them labor reforms will also happen so i can elaborate on what we have done for the startup but very quickly before doing that i want to underline with figures as to how we have increased the welfare for the welfare of scsts so the allocations for scheduled caste in b 2018-19 was only 0.62 lakh crores whereas now it is 0.81 lakh crores 30.6 percent increase for scheduled caste Amount earmarked in the BE of 2018-19 was 0.41 crore lakh crores, 0.41 lakh crores. Now in BE 2019-20 for the scheduled tribe, it is 0.53 lakh crores, 29.3 percent increase. So for women. the allocation in the 2018-19 was 1.28 lakh crores now it is 1.41 in this be 2019-20 10.2 percent increase for children 0.81 in re of 2018-19 0.81 lakh crores that is now gone up to 0.92 lakh crores 13.6% increase for children's outlay 
Similarly, sir, the northeastern region has not lost out on our importance, the importance that this government has been giving. You are aware, in the last government between 14 and 19, ministers went to the northeast at least three in a year, uh, in a month. Three in a month, cabinet ministers, ministers visited northeast to ensure that the pending projects are all completed. Placing and continuing to place the importance of Northeast, I wish to draw your attention that the budget provisions for under the RE of 2018-19 for the Northeast was 0.47 lakh crores. Now it's gone to 0.59 lakh crores. 25.5% increase. And for the subsidies, the general fear is probably because we are maintaining the fiscal deficit uh, gliding path, we will not give attention to the subsidies. Major subsidies have had 13.5% increase in allocation, sir. Last time it was 2.66 lakh crores under the RE of 2018-19, now it is 3.02 lakh crores. Sir, I wouldn't take much of your time. Members have been very considerate to talk to us about the various schemes. I welcome any member who wants to have clarification on any of that which I have said in this house to please just give me a call. I will go where they are, explain what we want to say and prove that the data which is given in this budget is 100% of our vote. There shall be enough exercise and more and I am willing to engage with them as much as they want, whenever they want. So I wish to assure you, um, Manya Speaker Mahoday, through you, I wish to assure this entire house, there need not be any spe speculation on the figures which have been given out. Every number is authentic and I have quoted also the reason as to why the differences between one number in the uh, economic survey as opposed to what ap appeared in the budget document. With all this said, I just want to... Uh, end my uh, thanksgiving and also response to the budget discussion is yes, I'm very pleased that the members have taken this interest. We wish to assure that this government believes in bringing in transformational change in India, keeping the common, uh, common man in mind, whether he is in the village, whether he is in the uh, cities, whether he is living in far-flung areas, Every aspect of the economy has been given a priority and we shall do it, making sure that members of parliament can constantly be informed about it in various ways. I thank each one of the members who participated in this discussion and I am very happy to be able to give them the explanation. Thank you. माने सदस्य आप बीच में बोट ले लिए आपका क्लियर पेशन हो गया सुदीप दादा और नहीं होगा सर आप भी सर फिनेंस मिनिस्टर भी टीचर है हम भी टीचर बन गए हैं मास्टर ये नहीं करना चाहिए अरे बच्चियां टीचर नहीं